as simple as that. And once again, we thank you from all of us here at Gospel 88.7 FM and 100.3 FM, where we have gospel and where we're spreading the gospel one song at a time. God bless you. Hold on, let me just turn this phone on. And yes, we are back. We are listening to WHA Spotlight with the coach, Minister Michael Bailey, right here on WHA, where we're Christ centered, community focused, and we're listener supported. And uh, I have my guest in the studio with me. And uh, this is uh, like second or third time coming back in. We're always glad to have him in the studio. He always has something enlightening for us regarding the city of Atlantic City and some of the things that are happening there. And so we are so glad to have the council president from the city of Atlantic City in our studio, Mr. Marty Small. Marty Small, welcome to Spotlight with the Coach. Good afternoon, Coach Mike. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, good afternoon to your listening audience. Got a little scratchy and raspier voice today. Because he's yelling on the phone. That's why. <laughs> I was yelling on the phone earlier. And also, to be honest, I'm still recovering from Sunday's victory. Yes, yes. Fly Eagles fly. Yes, listen, I saw that video, man. And um, <laughs> you were sitting there hot, jaws tight until they missed the uh, field goal. Then you were all over the place with your Fly Eagles fly song and all That's that. right. Uh, listen, if you're talking about an avid Eagles fan, this is an A number one right here. Now I had Mr. Ronald Jordan on about a, a month, a month and a half, uh, a month and a half ago, and uh, Mr. Jordan and Marty Small are the number one Eagle fans that you ever want to find. And uh, listen, well, you were almost in tears that when they missed that field goal, weren't you? Well, well, I I, I was a little emotional because listen, man, I I that's the part I love, man. Um, you know, just being able to have fun. You know, with your real friends, you know, people that you grew up with. Um, not all of us are Eagle fans. That's you know, right. we spend the whole day from noon. I go to the 8 o'clock service on Sunday, so we get there at noon when the Eagles play away. And we're there till at least, like, halftime of the Sunday night game. Just good friends having good, clean fun. Yes. And the amount of trash talk <laughs> and things that were going on. And it, it was just a tense moment. I mean, literally, you could cut the room uh, with a knife, with the tension that was in uh, Eagles country, as I like to call my man cave. <laughs> and when he missed, it was just like all the emotion came out. It was crazy, man. It was <clears throat> but, crazy. But I'm going to tell you this, and I'm going to tell your audience, listen. Uh-oh, we have a prediction coming up? Take it to the bank. <laughs> I run a trip every year um, called Fly Eagles Fly Weekend, and this year okay. it was a five-day, four-night trip to New Orleans. Mm -hmm. This was the best trip we ever had except for the game. Yeah. We lost 48-7. to seven. They ran the score up, but guess what? As they say, revenge is a dish. Best <laughs> That's the serve cold. cold. <laughs> yes, we're coming back, and we, we remember that. We're going to get revenge. And not always the best team wins. Like last year, people didn't give the Eagles a chance. That's right. The hot team wins, and we're hot. That's right. Okay, so do you have a prediction? You know, you're famous for your score predictions. <clears throat> yes, I, 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 I will have my prediction – uh, on Facebook tomorrow okay. live. I'm still doing a little more homework. I'm um, getting the numbers, <laughs> but I'm letting you know the Eagles are going to win. The Eagles are going to. You heard it here first. Councilman President Council President Marty Small said the Eagles will win Sunday. Yes. All right. Okay. We take that to the bank, everybody. Yes. The Eagles will win Sunday. Well, well, Councilman Small, let me tell you, it's so so glad to have you here, and um, it's always good to talk about the Eagles and everything else that you're doing. Yes. Um, so, but how long have you been involved in Atlantic City politics? Well, um, I've been involved in Atlantic City politics since I was a kid. I I came up under Jim Whelan. I used to hand flyers out for Jim Whelan in uh, my ward, Rise Nance, and I've always been involved in the fabric. Um, I've always been a leader amongst my peer group, and um, I got involved directly um, in 2002. I ran for the Atlantic City Board of Education. Um, I won, uh, thank the voters. I was the top vote getters and it was top vote getter. And then um, immediately at the reorganization meeting, they named me vice president, a position that I held for a year and a half until I went to city council. Uh, January 1st made my 15th year wow. serving the residents of the second ward. Wow. And I was elected in 2004 as the youngest council member in the history of the city, elected council member. And it's, it's, it's a job that I very much enjoy. Um, I don't take my constituents for granted at all. 
And I'm just, you know, blessed to be in a position to still serve the constituents of Atlantic City. Amen. You said you went to 8 o'clock service. I just want to back up a little bit. Where do you go? So, so oh, I'm a, I'm a member of Second Baptist Church. Um, I grew up in, as a member of Hamilton Memorial United Methodist That's Church. Right. <laughs> and I was a choir boy under Marvin Hill, uh, Coach <laughs> Mike, who uh, ran Pal and, uh, you know, um, ran the Little League and the basketball team, which... He's never going to let me live down Hackensack. That's our inside <laughs> joke. But we used to joke about the Hamilton Mass Choir versus the, the Voices, Voices of Hope. <laughs> yes, um, those. But listen, you were also a part of the Lang City Board of Education. You were the, the president and all. Yes. So, so my question to you is what made you be uh, want to become a public servant? Well, like I said, it was always uh, Emmy. Um, I've always had... Uh, leadership skills. I was always outspoken. I was always one, never afraid to take on challenges or the establishment. And uh, that that's that's a quality that sometimes uh, the gift and the curse. But, um, you know, everyone already, you know, forecasted that I would be in some type of uh, leadership position. I could tell you this, growing up, I was a member of the PAL too, but my home was Boys and Girls Club. And all the directors and all the staff used to say, Man, you you you're the boys and girls club. That's right. You know, one day you're gonna come back and run this place. And my boys used to tease me. There was a karate master on the wall. They said they're gonna take his picture down and <laughs> and put mine up. And you know, thank God I had the opportunity to quote go home. Um, right. A couple years after I graduated from school, the new boys and girls club opened in January 2000. And they hired me, and that was a position that I held um, for four and a half years. That's right. As a and then I went on to work for the Atlantic City Board of Education. Right, 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 absolutely. And so and you've always, <coughs> since since you've uh, gone to college and have come back, you've always loved your city. Yes. And you've always been a person to, to, to want to come back and, and, and um, care for those who are behind you, so to speak, or who are coming up and yes. help to groom young men and young ladies in the Atlantic City Boys and Girls Club, the Atlantic City Board of Education, and then even doing it through council. Uh, so twice you run for the office of mayor, right? Yes. And twice without success. And um, so let me ask you, in those times, what have you learned or what knowledge have you gained in your two um, unsuccessful bids for mayor? Okay, well, let's, 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 let's talk about the first race. Um, I was a lot more immature um, then um, at, was it 34 years old, 33? I thought the world was mine. Um, and I took on the establishment, which meaning it was a candidate who had deep community ties. And I challenged Lorenzo Langford, and <clears throat> it was a humbling experience um, that not only did I come in not win, but I came in third. So, you know, I took a little soul searching, um, said, why, you know, I do so much for the community. Right. You know, why don't people want to look at me as their leader? And, you know, like I said, it was just a lot of uh, growing up. And also at the time, like the day after the election, the uh, state police raided my campaign headquarters because they suspected that there were vote there was voter fraud right. uh, going on. And subsequently, and unfortunately, I was indicted and I had to stay in trial. Um, you know, thank God the truth came out. You know, we stood strong and it showed that there was zero evidence That's right. of uh, anything. Um, but... You know, things like that make you stronger. Um, there's a true saying that what don't kill you make you stronger. That's right. And tough times don't last, tough people do. Mm. And um, there was a tough ordeal for me and my family, especially, you know, my wife. She was pregnant, you know, with my son at the time, and that's a lot of stress. That's right. And I remember um, I was on Harry Hurley's show one day, the day of my son's first birthday, and we was out outside um, in the truck before I actually went into court. And that was one of the few times that I got emotional because he was like, you know, here you are <laughs> sitting on trial. It's uh, Marty Jr.'s birthday. It's more, more than music. It's ministry. Okay. Yeah, he was like, here you are sitting on trial, and you don't even know if you're going to come home for your son's birthday. So wow. when you put things in perspective That's like right. that, um, you know, it's really challenging. But like I said, you know, thank those jurors and um, our team for standing strong and winning that. Now we forward back to 2017 primary, it was a total different story. I mean, the community had supreme confidence in me. I won the vote at the polls. I didn't have the Democratic support. I ran off the line and I still won at the polls. Right. And uh, my platform and my vision for the city was truly embraced. 
And this is one of those times in defeat where I still feel like I won. And I'm saying that to say, um, you know, I've, you know, put myself in this position along with the support of my colleagues to be a leader, a spokesperson for the city. And um, you kind of gain a lot of trust, um, not only from your colleagues, but, you know, from people from the state. Right. So it's like, yes, I did lose, but the way I lost, um, you know, it was a dirty campaign, not on my part, but the way I lost, you know, was embraced by many because some of the things that, I didn't fight back on. It really showed people who didn't truly know me. Okay. Another side of me. And okay. it's like, well, you know, wow. What, what do you mean by that, Marty? I mean, because I've always said that I've got a bad rap. Um, I'm one that is extremely close to my constituents. Um, the first shot that people always take is, oh, well, Marty does parties. And, you know, I have a slogan. We don't throw parties. We throw events. And I've always done that to stay close to my constituents. Um, I don't think that there's anything wrong. People want to focus on the negative perception because it's hip-hop. And that's not fair. And if you ask the people who attend near and far, it's one of the few times that people can go out in the city of Atlantic City, party in the casino, well, excuse me, have an event in a casino atmosphere, and, you know, have a good time, meet people from out of town. But they're not focusing on the big picture. Everyone always says that Atlantic City needs to focus on more non-gaming activities. Why? Because it's Councilman Marty Small. It's a problem. I'm selling out hotel rooms. People are staying here in two and three nights. What are they doing? They they sleeping in our casino rooms. They're eating in our restaurants. They're shopping in our uh, stores. They're tipping the service staff. So it's a win-win-win for everybody. So, like, why focus on the negative? Just imagine um, if my event wasn't in town that weekend, you know, that's, you know, people that wouldn't even think about coming to Atlantic City. And the event is kind of morphed into more than just Atlantic City because that's that's truly the case. I mean, we get people here uh, from all over. So I understand, you know, that people, you know, want to be critical of that. But doing that, it doesn't affect me on my job. It doesn't affect me as a council person, and it definitely doesn't affect me in my household. Absolutely. And so you feel that, well, you won at the polls. Yes. You won at the polls, correct? Yes. Making yes. your last bid for mayor. Yes. So why do you feel that th this part that you give events or parties, if you will, had an effect on the election? It no, didn't. no, 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 no. Um, I, maybe I missed because, because that. most of the the, fir the first time the first time. the first time it did I heard that a lot. Okay, you're not hearing it as much, right? Because people have seen the growth in me. They've seen the other side. Okay. I'm taking responsibility for the city's finances. Um, I'm taking the responsibility of fighting for the employees, right. fighting for the residents of Atlantic right. City. And one thing about me is what you see is what you get. Like I'm not one to be fake because of politics. Um, I'm as real as it can get. I don't tell somebody something in the first ward, and then when I'm down in the sixth ward, it's a different story. That's just right. not me. And, you know, I'm glad that people are starting to look past that. But, you know, it, it, it used to be a big issue. Right. But, um, hey, listen, people have their opinions. Um, I'm going to do whatever's necessary to take care of me and my family. So you didn't win because of absentee and message yes. of ballots? Yes, that, that that's I, I wanted the polls, but when they tallied the final absentee messenger ballots, uh, I came up short. Okay. One thing I've always appreciated about you is that whatever you believe in, you stick to it, whether it's the popular uh, way that yes. everyone else thinks or not. And I've always often told you that. Yes. You know, you'll stick to it with a room full of people that says, no, we disagree. And yes. you'll always stick to what you believe yep. in. And that's admirable, man. I mean, yes. I mean, especially in the world today where people flip flop so much. Yes. You yes. Know, that, that's and, that's, and that's true, man. You just got to just keep your integrity and you got to understand that you know, if you do 99 things right, the 100th thing that you do wrong, some people are going to criticize right. it. I look at it like this. In politics, it's going to be people that your supporters, your hardcore, hardcore supporters that's going to support you no matter what. There's going to be people that are against you no matter what for any reason. That's right. And then there's that crowd that go whatever, whatever way the wind blows. And right. I would like to think that I've done far more good for people in the city of Atlantic City than any perceived ill. 
Right, right. Well, absolutely right. I mean, uh, often people are asking me something, and if I don't know the answer, I always say, listen, you got to get in touch with Marty. Marty can help you out, or Marty can probably give you the yes. answer or lead you in the right way. And yes. so, you know, but let me ask you this. Do you think that you'll ever run again um, for mayor? Would, would you consider a third run at this? Well, I know that I was caught on my running mate's Facebook Live which wasn't supposed to be broadcasted. Um, I asked everyone to kind of turn off the phones. I wanted to address my longtime hardcore supporters. And my wife didn't want me to run because of the drama that came with my lad, my, my initial run. I understand. And I said, look, I'm, I'm, I'm here for the people. Um, I really want to do this. I believe I'm the best person for the job. It's my time. And that night, um, I had my wife next to me and my two kids in front of me. And I basically told my supporters, I said, look, you know, we, we, we said when we started this that, you know, if we're not successful, this is it. And, you know, it was very emotional um, at the time because you think like when you first started out and you had your core supporters right. on a political journey with you for the good and the bad. And it was just an emotional time. And I said at that time, I said, well, more than likely, and I didn't guarantee anything. I said, this is the last time my name will appear on a ballot. Subsequently, after that, you know, I still have to be a councilman. So I was going to the senior buildings and right. community meetings. And, you know, the people that read it in the paper would call me like, man, Atlantic City needs you. You better not quit. You better not give up. And the seniors is like, you've been fighting for us all this time. Don't do it. You know, we'll be disappointed. And you kind of step back, take a breath and put things uh in, in perspective, um, right now I'm the city council president. Um, I was elected. My term is up for second ward councilman, which all councilman wards one through six are up oh, in okay. June. Right. And um, I intend to run for re-election in the second ward. And if an opportunity presents itself, um, you know, I may take another shot. Okay, great. So when when you said that, uh, well, this will be the last time you see my name on the ballot. Did you say that out of um, anger, out of discouragement, um, frustration? No, I mean, I mean, listen, I'm a I'm a I'm a competitor. You know, from a, uh, from a child, I'm absolutely very competitive. Right. Um, whether it's baseball, basketball, you know, or just just anything. Um, it 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 was more basically said because I told her to support me one more time. You know to you know to do it. So it was just like here it is. We we you know we we had a great showing. Uh, we come up short, and honestly, um, one besides the residents, and this this is a true story. When I was running the um, athletic program for Atlantic City Elementary School, my flagship event was Super Saturday. Right. So my daughter was cheer she she was cheering in the competition, and they came in third place, and she was you know very upset. You know almost in tears and I took upstairs to the room I was like lay down took out the phone and we laid there and I played the song by Fantasia like sometimes you got to lose to win again mm -hmm. so I had sent my family home because I wanted to you know say my farewells to my supporters and thank the people for you know working for me a lot of people volunteered their time and when I came in the door you know I heard the feet boop 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 so my daughter comes out, looks over the foyer, and says, Dad, she was like, come here. So I go upstairs, and I'm still sad, so she gives me a hug. She said, Dad, come on, let's lay down. I said, you know, Jada, what's going on? What's, what's on? She's like, no, I want you to listen to something. And she played that song for me. She said, don't wow. you ever say that you're going to quit. And I'm like, this is an example of, like, Absolutely. practice what you preach. Right. So, right. you know, that's a motivating factor in there as well. But... Like I said, man, I'm 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 having a great time. Um, I'm supported by my council colleagues like no other. And um, like I said, any time that there's an opportunity to, you know, be in leadership in my city, um, I'm gonna always consider it. Absolutely, and now uh, that's a great story, by the way. Yeah. Uh, also, now we all know that the state has taken over the city of Atlantic mm -hmm. City and the affairs of this the city. What powers do you, as council president? council members themselves and the mayor have being that the state basically has the say if you will in the city well i can only speak about city council right now mm -hmm. we've been overruled twice and one time because it was an emergency they had to sign something we didn't have no council meeting 
And I said, I'm not okay. calling a special meeting. So he made a decision. Okay. That's it. Okay. I mean, so basically, my, 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 from when I first became a councilman to now, it's really no difference. It's just that the state is there. And listen, nobody was fighting harder, you know, against the state takeover, but right. you got to reverse course. Now that they're here, you got to make the best of it. You got to play by the rules that you're given. Right. And I, I will say that uh, you did fight hard to keep the state from coming in and for taking over, but, you know, things happen. And when yeah. they happen, then you just do what's best for the city, what's best for the people around you. Yes. And that's and that's and that's what I've been able to do under those circumstances. Okay, so they haven't really um, messed with any of the decisions that council basically has made. No, no, no. I mean, when 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 you look at the state, and the reason why um, it was so difficult to support is because basically the legislation said that you could come in and unilaterally destroy contracts. Um, you know, they can make decisions for the governing body. And you know things like that, and no, you know nobody wanted that. Mm, right, absolutely, absolutely. With the recent adversities and the allegations surrounding the mayor, um, many political opponents would have taken that opportunity to um, cast disparaging remarks, uh, to say "I told you so," and to really um, pounce on that situation. Um, but you didn't do that. Uh, I noticed the interviews I saw. You didn't do yes. that. You basically said. Uh, that's between the mayor and his uh, accusers, but the city of Atlantic City is still running and we're still... Why did you take that route where others may have decided this is my opportunity to say, see, you know, or whatever? I understand that. And, you know, you, you, you look at the situation is similar to what went on in the 2017 campaign between him and I. I mean, the, the, the vigor and the, uh, you know, the dirtiness that him and his team you know, put out, you know, on me. Um, a lot of things that they put out, people already knew, and they knew it wasn't true. But, you know, basically it was a situation where he said and did anything to get elected. Um, looking at his situation now, um, I wouldn't do that. Um, that's the integrity in me. Um, I'm not going to kick anyone when they're down. I've been in similar situations, and, you know, he's innocent until proven guilty. And his personal situation is none of my business. I mean, that's between him, his accusers, and the FBI. Right. I have nothing, you know, to, to say about that. My focus is to make sure that investors, the residents, businesses, employees know that there's strong leadership in the city of Atlantic City. And it's important, yes, it is a distraction, but it's important for us as a city not to be distracted. Right. Absolutely. Well, that brings me to this point. I mean, you talked about some of the things that went on during the election. And, um, you know, you really have to have a heart to really want to be in this game because politics has turned to be so personal and so dirty in this day and time, not only here, everywhere around the country. I mean, and so why do you want to go through this? And because, you know, it kind of comes with the territory. Now. Yeah. And and. And Coach and, and, but let me let me but let me say this: there were things that were said on both sides that I thought, well, wow, you know what I'm saying? Well, and, so, and nothing came from well, me. Well, I, I can honestly say that nothing well, came from me. Okay, okay. Or anybody associated or connected to me, and that's why I think in a loss it became a win for me because okay. so many people was just like, wow, Marty, like you really took the high road. I was expecting you to come back and say right. this. I was expecting right. you to come back and say that. Well, let me say, and, it, it, maybe maybe you didn't, Marty, but but mm -hmm. maybe maybe the press brought some things out, or whether well, if things still came out, yes. you, you know what I'm saying, and whether who did it or not. Mm -hmm. But I mean, true or not, you know, false accusations to whatever on on all sides, everywhere. Um, but what what I'm saying is that you know why go through this? And and, and like I said, I had to show tremendous restraint because you know as a competitor and as when you see lies, sometimes say, okay, well, let's come back. Right. But that's credit to the people around me. You're only as strong as the people around you. Um, I don't have yes men and women around me. Um, you should hear the conversations with my friends and I, and that's how it's always going to be, and that's how it's always been. But um, it just shows that I'm in it for the right reasons. Who wants to go through that? And not that you're in it for money because – you're not getting rich as a council person. We're talking about thirty thousand dollars right. for a million dollars worth of problems, and certainly me, um, because of my position, I've unfortunately went through two trials. 
to the tune of a quarter million right. dollars plus. So I'm not doing it for money. Right. I mean, I'm in it because I love my city. I love the people here. And um, my, my, my heart is always going to be in the right place. And not only that, and going back to the previous uh, situation when we're talking about the uh, current affairs of the uh, the mayor, you know, a lot of people are saying, well, yeah, you know, if something happens, I mean, we can't control the law. The state of New Jersey, Title 40, the law is crystal clear. Should a vacancy occur in the mayor's office, whomever, no ma- I mean, it could have been you, Coach Mike, if you was on council, but I'm just right. putting it out. It's not like it's ordained for Marty Small, like, personally to be there. It's whoever sitting in the chair. You're right, absolutely. They become, and we went through this back in 2007. With Speedy, Speedy Marshall. They become mm-hmm. acting mayor mm-hmm. for a period, wait, acting mayor and city council president for a period of about 30 to 45 days. Right, correct. Then, by law, the state's Democratic committee has to come in and hold a special meeting. And at that meeting, by law, the Democratic committee have to submit three names as candidates, by law. Then, by law, city council has to call a special meeting, and they have to vote on those three names, by law. Whatever name city council votes for will officially, no acting or anything, will officially become the mayor of Atlantic City. Yes. Until such time, depending on when it happens, and it's generally a special election in November. And then at that time, anybody can run. The person who is the current mayor by the choice of city council, they run, and and it's a special election. And whomever is successful in that special election, they will fill the remaining balance of the mayor's term should a vacancy occur. And in my situation, if it's me immediately upon being sworn in, the second war seat becomes vacant. And then now you have to go through that again. So it's not just, oh, well, the mayor. I mean, it's it's a bigger, you know, situation. I mean, it could change the Atlantic City political landscape. Right, right. I understand. But like I said, listen, I'm focused on being a city council president and second right. war councilman uh, at this time. And, you know, should an opportunity present itself, um, I will definitely be able to do a good job. And I, I believe you will. I mm-hmm. believe you will. And uh, so let me ask you this. How is the relationship between council and the mayor? Is it a cordial relationship to go forward for the betterment of the city of Atlantic City? The council when, and the when, when he got sworn in on January 1st, because, you know, a lot of people, it was a bitter election. They would say, well, you know, Marty's the council president. Anything he puts up is going to be blocked. Number one, that's not my character. People saying that they don't know me. Okay. I love Atlantic City. And I've always been able to separate personal and business. I had many personal reasons to be angry at the state. They took me to do two trials for nothing. Ruined my finances, a quarter million dollars. And I didn't, you know, take it personal and say, well, the state had me on trial. I'm not going to work with y'all. And taking it personal when we were battling Chris Christie and Steve Sweeney and the state government, you know, when, when it became that the city was taking over, Okay, well, this is who I got to get along with. You have to be a professional first. So I'm saying that to say on January 1st, 2018, when he got sworn in, I gave a speech. I told the world, I said, listen, some people may think this, but y'all are sadly mistaken. If it's good for the city, I'm going to support it. If it's not good, I'm not going to support it. It's just that simple. Amen. And I said, you know, and I looked at him and I said, and guess what? If we got to go to war with the state of New Jersey again on behalf of the residents, I'm going to stand right next to you like I stood next to Guardian. And that's and that's what it is. Absolutely. And I can sit here and say January 10th, 2019, that has happened. I haven't gotten in the way of anything. Amen. Amen. That and is- he's admitted as such. Okay. That's great. That's great. Now, are we in good hands? Is the city going forward? Are we moving forward? I mean, you know, a, a year or so this time, or a year and a half, two years ago, um, people were, were unemployed. Everyone was looking for jobs, and now, you know, it seems that we have, we, been have a we have we have jobs back. The uh, rating firms, Standard and Poor's, and Moody's have given the city positive outlooks. But look, we can't let our guard down. As I stated, you know, in 2016, people were running to the bank. To make sure that they checks cash right. because we were literally, <laughs> yes. literally running out of money. Yes. It was a precarious situation. And, you know, thank God that we got through that and, you know, we're better for it. 
And and the outlook is positive as long as we keep the budget numbers down and uh you know keep the residents and the businesses happy with the tax structure, um you know Lang City's going to be all right. Great, and I know you have to leave because you do have to. We're, we're going to talk about the uh, other job that mm-hmm. you're doing, but uh I want to ask that there was talk of stipends for all city employees, and then there was a saying, well, it may happen, it may not happen. Where well, are we with that? Well, well, here, here it is. I had a press conference which I talked to. I vetted my plan through the lieutenant governor. Rob Long, who's a deputy, Jason Holt, who's the business administrator, and Rick Richardella, who's the fiscal state monitor. I told them, I said, I want to come up with something with the employees. Because the the truth of the matter is, everybody talked about it, but no one put pen to paper. I said, I have a plan, and here's what I want to do. I'm having a press conference to announce it. They know about it. Okay. We come up with the numbers, and a lot of people are confused. Stipends, raises. It's a raise, but we paying you in form of a stipend. When you're under this type of stronghold with the state it's important that as a leader you come out with creative and outside the box thinking okay and that's what i did and what happened i proposed a five thousand dollar pay raise over a three-year period right which is good because the state there's no collective bargaining so they don't have to entertain anything absolutely so what i did was say okay if you're making thirty thousand dollars at the end of 2021 you're going to be making 35 but Year one, we're going to give you a $2,000 stipend, but the salary is going to carry over. So instead of getting your $2,000 spread out over 26 paychecks, you're getting a check, which could, in a sense, be more beneficial. Yes. Because, and, and then the next year, even lower, $1,000, your salary will go to 33 now, thousand dollars over 26 paychecks is about 20 bucks. Right, exactly. You're not really saying that. Exactly. And God forbid if you have a bunch of deductions and other obligations. Right. <laughs> you know, right. you're not really looking at anything. So your salary goes to 23, and then finally, it goes to 35. The 2,000 dollars. The following year, it goes to 35,000 dollars. I mean, 35,000. So where are we? With which, that? which, what I said. A lot of people they just look at the headline and does don't really understand the details. You can go on my page and listen to the Facebook live. I said, this is a proposal. This is my plan, the small plan. To you know, for the city employees, I'm the chairman of Revenue and Finance, and I'm on the budget committee. And we told them we're going to work it through the budget process. So the press of Atlantic City had a misleading headline in the newspaper says state raises are not a sure thing. But if you read the article, <clears throat> the spokesperson for DCA, Lisa Ryan, basically said what I said. She says yes, the money that he's talking about is in that account. That is the amount. But we're going to work it through the 2019 budget process and see what happens. The first responsibility is to the taxpayers. I said the same thing. I said, we will not raise taxes for raises. Right. So we're going to work it through the 2019 budget process. And guess what, Coach Mike? You don't put a plan out there if you don't believe in it and you don't believe that it can be done. Right. And at the same time, I'm not afraid to fail. If it fails... Is not from lack of trying. It's not from, That's you right. know, putting the employees first. Um, there's a lot of people who just always want to be on the side of right. And, you know, a lot of people are confused. Employees, they're like, even if they're like, oh, we're going to get those checks by Christmas. I'm like, I'm talking 2019. Right. You know? Right. So right. Just, just be okay. patient and sit back and, you know, just know that I'm going to be in the room fighting for you. Okay. Amen. What else do you, you and your colleagues have planned that may be on the horizon that we don't see, haven't heard of, or we may have heard of about it and um, kind of forgot about it? Any new plans? No, I mean, or, I mean, every uh, year is a new year. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the first priority is the budget, um, and that's what we want to do. We want to make sure we take care of our employees in 2019. Um, that's my focus, keeping the taxes down. Um, we would like to see more um, programming with youth. We would like to see... Uh, more development to bring the middle class back. I think we have to build up our city, have more professionals living here. You have Stockton, you have Atlantic Care that's getting ready to to expand. And, um, you know, when you have housing, um, it puts more rateables, you know, in the tax base, make your taxes lower, my taxes lower and everything. And, you know, it just builds up a community. Um, I'm going to work with CRDA to see if we can provide those incentives like they did with the police and firemen years ago. So now we should expand it to teachers, other professionals that want to live in Atlantic City but always complain about the taxes in Atlantic City. So if you can work here, I mean, if you can work here and make money, 
you, you should keep your money in town as well. So All right. that's what we're trying to do. Okay. Now, you, you I t- mentioned that you had to leave because you had to go somewhere else. Tell us about this other adventure that you're doing. Uh, yes. Right um, November 26, um, as you know, I've been a lifelong recreation professional like yourself. Um, I was hired as the Dean of Athletics, Recreation, and Governmental Affairs at Principal Academy Charter School in Pleasantville. We have a game tonight in Lower Cape May, so I'm going to ride the bus with the kids. Okay, that's excellent. It's kind of what you were doing with the Atlantic City Board of Education. Yes, yes, yes. But this is a single school, Atlantic City. Um, we had all the elementary schools, um, you know, together. But, right. um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm loving it and just looking forward to providing those experiences for the children. That's great. Well, you're the right man for the job. Mm-hmm. So let me ask you, if you had a message to give to Atlantic City, what would your core message be? You had Atlantic City in front of you and you stepped to the podium. And what would your message just be to the residents of Atlantic City? My message to Atlantic City, as I said, despite any distractions, don't get distracted. It's very important. You know, the city... You know, we're moving in a direction. Um, there's various leaders in place for reasons. Um, you know, city council is a co-equal uh, to the administration. And if it was something happening on the council, and I'm sure the administration's message would be the same way. To the residents, um, in 2019, we're going to continue to keep your taxes lower. Um, since I've been revenue and finance chair, I have an excellent record. Flat budget year one. Five and a half percent decrease in year two, flat budget year three, thirty five percent deduction in legal contracts, all while, you know, watching, you know, your money. So that's going to continue your priority. We want the businesses and uh investors um to still have confidence in the city of Atlantic City and know that um, you know, pro- projects are still being done. Your trash is still being taken out. Um if you call a police or fire, they'll be there that you know, we're going to continue the momentum in the city of Atlantic City. And like I said, we just have to remain focused. We can't let our guard down. We had a tremendous couple of years, and it's only going to continue to get better. And I'm going to make sure of that. Well said. Council, Council President Marty Small from the city of Atlantic City, thank you for coming on. No problem. Um, do you have any shout-outs? Anybody you want to say hey to? Or, uh, well, I'll be remiss. I think my wife is listening. I love you. i see you after the game. You can tell us your wife's name. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> yes, my wife is uh, Dr. LaQuetta Small of Pennsylvania Avenue School. She's the principal. And yeah. we have two lovely children, Jada Small, who turned 11. Wow. Oh, wow. wow. 11 years old right. on January 2nd. And Marty Jr., he's eight, but he'll be nine on March 8th. All right. And to the rest of my family, I love you as well. And all my supporters and everyone in the great city of Atlantic City. <laughs> we Listen, we want to let you know that we are praying for you. And, and, and you said a shout out. Fly, Eagles, fly on the road to victory. Fight, 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 Eagles, fight. Score a touchdown, one, two, one, two, three. Hit them low, hit them high, and watch our Eagles fly. Fly, Eagles, fly on the road to victory. E-A-G-L-E-S, Eagles. Let's go, Birds. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> let's go. Council President Marty Small, thank City of Atlantic City, thank you so much for coming no and stopping with the coach. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Thanks. Yeah, that's my friend Marty Small. He always never had a loss for words, and he's been doing a tremendous job in the city of Atlantic City. We were just so blessed to have him in the studio. So we're going to take a break, and we're going to come back with some other things. Don't forget, you're listening to WHA Spotlight with the Coach, Minister Michael Bailey, right here on WEHA, Christ Center, community focused and listener supported. We have gospel. 88.7 FM and 100.3 FM Atlantic City and Pleasantville. Don't you go.